In this video, I'm going to compare three mid-size sub 200 pound speakers with the winner finding a permanent place on my desk. So stick around to the end of this video to find out which one I'll be keeping. Hey pals, welcome back. Choosing a pair of speakers was by far the hardest part of building my setup. There's so many different options out there and until they're actually on your desk, it's impossible to know how good they'll sound or whether they'll perform well for the type of audio that you'll be listening to or working with. So I've had the Razer Nomo speakers on my desk for about a year now. Costing less than £100, they're actually not terrible for the price you pay, and they have a really unique design that definitely complements my desk style. Recently, however, I found myself wanting more for my desktop monitors. After all, these are the speakers I spend the most time listening to on a day-to-day -day basis, so it makes sense to get a pair that suits my needs as a full-time creative professional. Now, obviously, I can't compare every pair of speakers on the market in this video, so I've tried to choose three options which I think best represents the current buyer's landscape, while also staying within a sensible budget that's enough to offer a decent level of audio quality. First, we have the PreSonus Eris, which currently hold the title of bestseller for desktop speakers on Amazon UK. There's a few size options available, but I chose the 4.5 inch version to get the most out of the budget and to keep it in line with the other choices. Up next, we have the Pioneer DJ DM50Ds, which are a recent update to their line of popular desktop monitors and was also one of the only brands that I was actually familiar with before making this video. Finally, we have the Kanto YU, which are a more affordable version of their YU4 speakers, which I often see included within similar desk setups, so I was keen to include them. To ensure we're getting the most out of each option, I'm using a pair of six inch stands to both elevate the speakers so that the tweeters are closer to ear level for improved clarity and for better surface separation so that we're not losing out on the low end either. So now that we've established the competition, let's get stuck in. Starting off with build quality, all three use premium materials where it matters to deliver a solid audio experience. But you'll also notice where cost saving measures have been implemented to keep the price down. The PreSonus Eris are the worst culprit for this with considerably cheaper feeling connections and a much hollower feeling body which doesn't really inspire much confidence when you're setting them up. The gap is much smaller between the YU and the DM50Ds however. Both are much more solid feeling and weightier to hold. However, I think the materials that Kanto have used are just a little bit nicer and they have a more pleasing finish overall. Obviously, which design you like is going to come down to personal preference. The DM50Ds are the only choice that come in more than one color. So if you're not a fan of matte black, these might be a better option for you. They're a bit clumsy looking, but after a couple of days on my desk, I've warmed up to them and I actually don't mind the design. They definitely have a more retro feel and the base ports give them a bit more character than the other two options. The Eris are much more functional by design and are the only option featuring the power switch on the front side. The corners are also a bit more squared off, making them feel taller. And there's a small logo on the bottom right of the speaker, as well as some subtle blue coloring on the woofer materials. Overall, not a bad looking pair of speakers, but the branding may clash with other elements on your desk, depending on the style that you've gone with. The Kanto YUs are my personal favorite when it comes to looks. The lack of branding and fly-by-wire dial both contribute to their minimal design, but they're also a much more compact system, making them much easier to manage on a desk with limited space. There's a fair bit of variation in the features that these speakers offer, with each choice providing a relatively independent experience. The DM50Ds are primarily focused on serving music producers and have a mode selection switch, which allows you to choose between DJ and production mode. Although the inbuilt switch is a nice addition, it's placed on the rear of the speaker, making it a bit awkward to reach, which didn't really encourage me to use it. The production mode has a much flatter sound profile, and while this might seem quite focused on a particular audience, I can actually see these being quite useful for other creative professionals who want something a bit more accurate to reference their audio to, but can also enjoy punchier bass during casual listening. Ideally, I would prefer to tweak the EQ settings myself so that I can find a nice halfway point that works for the majority of my audio needs. Like the DM50Ds, the Eris also has a front-facing headphone port, along with inputs for AUX, TRS, and RCA cables. These speakers do have dials for adjusting their EQ settings, and being placed at the top of the back panel meant that they were much easier to reach. Because the Cantos are essentially a stripped-back version of the more expensive YE4, you lose some features such as multiple input options, and there's also no inbuilt phono amp, which allows you to power external peripherals like a turntable, but I think they're still a great option for desktop settings. They're also the only option to include a remote control, allowing you to fine-tune the bass and treble to your liking and control the speakers without interrupting your workflow. All three have an auto standby feature, which turns off the speakers after a period of no input. However, the DM50Ds has this annoying startup sound, which has an independent volume level from your computer, and I don't think there's any way you can actually turn it off. The problem with the reviewing audio quality is that everyone has their own taste in sound profile, 
and opinions in this department are largely subjective. For example, I prefer tighter bass with more clarity in the mids, but as I mentioned at the start of this video, the type of audio you'll be listening to is also going to affect your perceived experience. With this in mind, I rotated between these speakers a few times to try and get a feel for what each was capable of in a variety of different uses. Despite having the least convincing build quality, the Presonus Eris actually sounded really good. Being able to adjust the levels meant that I could tweak them to my preferred sound profile, and I really enjoyed the delivery that these provide. Despite this, there's a noticeable mains hum from these speakers that I can't seem to get rid of. It's not an issue when you're actively listening to something, but it can be annoying in quieter environments. Scanning through the reviews for these speakers, it seems that I'm not the only one with this issue either, so it's worth keeping this in mind. The Kanto YUs offered a more reserved output, with an emphasis on the higher frequencies. I felt like I wanted a bit more from the lower end at times, but they could get impressively loud without introducing distortion or surface shake. The DM50Ds are an interesting one. Initially, I had them set to production mode, which provides an accurate but fairly flat output. Great for content production, but not particularly fun for consuming content, and at first I felt pretty underwhelmed. The story changes when you switch to DJ mode though. Those bass ports at the front start kicking in, and you get some really impressive output from the low end. If you're a fan of heavier bass lines, the DM50Ds will provide the better experience straight out of the box. While you might have to invest in the optional subwoofers that the other options provide. Assuming the majority of people would want the most they can get from a simple two-way system, I'd personally rank the Pioneer DJ first, the Presona second, with the Kanto just very slightly trailing behind. If you're in the process of building a workspace, you probably already have a lot on your wishlist. So while it's tempting to save a few pennies by picking up a pair of budget speakers, you'll probably find yourself outgrowing them sooner rather than later, which is exactly what happened to me. I set a budget of £200 for this video because I think it represents a price point that offers a lot of feature-rich options with decent sound per pound that will also allow you to better understand your audio needs for future purchase decision making. In this last segment, I'm going to assess which choice provides the best overall value. Quick note from me, the Presonus and Pioneer DJ options can both be bought with or without Bluetooth functionality. The Cantos only have one version, so to keep things fair, I've outlined the different price options. I can see why the Eris are so popular on Amazon. At £189 with the Bluetooth version and £159 without, they're the cheapest of the three and I think a great option for those looking to spend a little bit extra for an upgraded audio experience. They're almost an excellent pair of desktop speakers, but they let themselves down by using poor quality materials that result in them feeling cheap by comparison. These DM50Ds are technically out of budget at £229. However, Pioneer DJ also sell a version for £199 if you don't need Bluetooth, so they just about sneak under the budget cap. I think they offer a lot at this price point, but I would have liked the option to fine tune the output a little bit more. That leaves the YUs, which come in at £199 and don't seem to compromise for that price. You get a great looking pair of speakers with excellent build quality that have all the features you need for a desktop setting. Even the battery for the remote are included in the box. With this in mind, it probably comes as no surprise that the Cantos are my overall winner. They scored consistently high across each criteria, and they've definitely earned a place on my desk setup. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanted to check out any of the speakers I've talked about for yourself, there are links in the description below, as well as links to everything else on my desk too. Thanks for watching, see you next time.